Hello everybody and welcome to the Pure Liberal Challenge. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to live during the Renaissance? Well, you don't have to wonder because uh, you're living it right now. It's taking place even as we speak. Western liberalism is being revived. Western culture is coming alive in a way which it hasn't been for quite a long time. I think that uh, Western liberalism began with the Greeks. Uh, this was a stunningly great people. They discovered and they invented reason. People say that they discovered and invented philosophy and science, but I think uh, mainly they just discovered reason. And reason uh, is the rational mind applied to physical reality, which is science, as well as applied to mental reality, which is philosophy. I think they began Western civilization. They began Western liberalism. I think uh, after the Greeks came along, they had a more or less magnificent 350 years, which is unprecedented in human history, uh, after which uh, there was maybe perhaps 100 years of a philosophical and intellectual decline, a kind of uh, irrationality which came into the world. But uh, this was maybe characterized by the fall in a way of atomism, Aristotelian, Aristotelianism, Epicureanism, and Stoicism. And it was a kind of uh, replaced by a kind of uh, Neoplatonism, which was very irrational, very skeptical, and uh, people no longer were, felt as certain or as confident as they as they had been previously in the rational mind and in the ability of human beings to understand reality. But by maybe perhaps 150 BC or so, uh, that didn't matter that much because uh, Greece was conquered by Rome, and Western liberalism or else uh, Greek reason was reborn. And this was followed up by perhaps another 350, 350 years of Western liberal greatness, of, uh, uh, of cultural ascendancy and triumph. And then by about the year 200, I think uh, irrationality started to creep back into the equation, and we had uh, something known as religion, which took over. And uh, it didn't defeat uh, Western liberalism immediately, but uh, after maybe uh, 100 years or 200 years or 300 years, depending on how you look at it, uh, that really was the beginning of the Dark Age. Let, let's call it like 500 AD. And that was followed by uh, perhaps 800 years of just sort of unimaginable irrationality and depravity and, and, uh, and cultural weakness and, and personal sadness. Uh, we can thank the Christians for that. Uh, they destroyed the Roman Empire, the greatest country that ever existed in the history of man. Uh, they replaced Greek, Greek reason with uh, something which I sometimes think of as uh, the anti-reason, or even if you want, the antichrist, which is uh, monotheism and religion and this uh, sort of stunning belief in that which is very false and very evil. By about the year 1300, um, nevertheless, rational liberal culture came back into existence. Uh, Western liberalism started to revive. And there was the Italian Renaissance from about the year 1300 to about the year 1500. In 1500, year more, in 1500, more or less, uh, the French conquered a very large part of Italy, and the Renaissance spread to all of Europe. So there was a European Renaissance from perhaps 1500 to about 1650, and it was very impressive. But even after then, uh, after that, uh, something came into the world which was known as the Enlightenment, also the Age of Reason. And that was when um, human reason, human rationality was at its very height. At its height. That was uh, the cultural ascendancy of man, the, uh, uh, the absolute uh, zenith, at least so far. But starting in about, let's say, 1800 or so, um, irrationality came back into the equation. Uh, irrational and illiberal culture um, came back. Partially this was uh, created by a kind of rebirth of religion, a rebirth of monotheism as well. as, uh, but, it, but mainly it was uh, caused by socialism. Uh, of course, you can always say that the bottom line, the, the ultimate cause, is always philosophical skepticism and philosophical irrationality. And I accept that, but uh, it was um, the illiberalism of the period was manifested um, partially in a rebirth of, re of religion, but mostly in this creation of this new and horrific thing known as uh, socialism, or sometimes known as communism, or sometimes known as welfare statism, uh, and you could also call it Marxism. Um, but uh, and that also in, inaugurated a kind of a cultural decline. And I would say it was so bad that uh, perhaps from the years um, 1914, which is World War II, World War I, up until maybe like um, 1989 or so, which was the end of the Cold War, that could actually be described as a dark age. But the world started to revive uh, in more or less 1989, 1985, something like that, during the period of 
of Gorbachev and Thatcher and Reagan. They defeated the previous period, which was uh, the period of, let's say, Stalin and Hitler and Mao. And that was also maybe the period of uh, Big Brother. Everywhere, even outside the world, the, the, even outside um, Stalin's Russia and Hitler's Germany and Mao's China, everywhere there was a growth of Big Brother and government and crime was uh, was ascendant and all sorts of social pathologies came into the world. But um, things changed very recently. In 1989, Europe, uh, uh, liber Eastern Europe liberated itself from communism. In 1991, the Soviet Union broke up. It, and it also liberated, liberated itself from communism. Ever since then, in the past 20 years, the welfare state has been in decline everywhere on earth. And I think uh, this, is a, this is a very major indication that uh, we're in a renaissance right now, that the world is ascending, that uh, Western liberalism is improving. I think there's also been a fall in crime in the last 20 years. In general, vice and pathology has fallen away. There's less drug use, less gambling, less... Uh, uh, promiscuity, less illegitimacy. There's even less pollution. I think that uh, in in the last 20 years, especially, um, equal rights have been established for women and blacks and gays. I think it's very important that Islam, which has been a terrible evil in the world, even worse than Christianity, Islam is now under attack. Ever since 9/11, for the past five or six years, it's been under attack, and that too is uh, is good news. I think uh, ever since uh, 2004, there's been this new thing into the world known as strong atheism, or else the new atheism, and it's uh, it's indicated by people like Sam Harris and uh, Daniel Dennett, Victor Stinger, and especially um, Richard Dawkins. And uh, still another indication, and, and this is this is terrific because it will defeat religion. It will defeat um, a huge part of irrationality, a huge part of illiberalism. I think uh, still another indication that this is a renaissance is just uh, the status of war. Uh, world War I ended in uh, 1918, and it was only 21 years later that we had World War II in 1939. But if you if you think about it, uh, there's been no war, no major wars for about for more than 60 years, and the prospects of uh, some sort of upcoming war between America and Russia, or America and China, or between India and China, or between Russia and China, the, the prospects are not very good. So um, once again, that's an indication, this absence of war, that we're in a kind of a renaissance. And I even think uh, this new group known as the neoconservatives, which are very different from the conservatives and the progressives, the normal right and left, they sort of combine the best of the left and the right. And um, I guess um, the final note on uh, why I think we're involved in a renaissance right now is because um, starting about the, in the early 1900s, there was this small group, group of people known as the Austrian economic thinkers, and they were... They were more than economic thinkers. They also dealt with uh, sociology and history and, and, and of course, um, on politics. And in the, in the very most recent period, ever since the 1960s, there's been such a thing as the objectivist philosophical movement and the libertarian political movement. And it won't be too long before I think um, something comes along, which is the final, the final word on all of this, which I refer to as pure liberalism. So um, this really is a renaissance. If, if you want to know what it was like to live in the early 1300s in Italy, if you want to know what uh, what it feels like to be inside a renaissance, all you have to do all you have to do is look around because right now this is a renaissance.